So welcome to Northern Powerhouses, our business success stories series of interviews, where we discuss with local business leaders their backgrounds, their successes and their challenges, and what's really driving them forwards. And this morning, I'm delighted to have with us Claire Morley-Jones, who's Managing Director at HR180. So Claire, thank you for spending a bit of time with us. If firstly you'd like to introduce yourself, HR180, what you do, how you help people, that would be wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm Claire Morley-Jones. I'm the founder. I need to remember who am I. <laughs> um, I am the founder and managing director of HR180. Um, I founded the business back in 2006. Um, we are a full service agency. Um, we work with small to medium enterprises to create uh, thriving, hopefully, and engaging work environments, essentially. Um, we act either as a full HR function for a small yep. business where a, a small business will get um, a, an actual HR business partner, an advisor and an administrator actually running their full function. So right. making sure that the HR business partner is working on strategy for the SME while the advisor is helping line managers and the administrator is making sure that contracts of employment go out, for example. Really? So we do, we do the actual HR function side. We also do... Um, big projects so so things such as a merger and an acquisition where we need to do all the due diligence or oh, afterwards really? where we're merging cultures together um and uh yeah trying to make both businesses effective as one new unit um we look at engagement and retention all those types of things and then we do what we call emergency projects which is where our kind of superhero theme comes from Brilliant. Um, and that can be anything from uh, a director's dispute. So a, a, a managing director brother and uh, another director sister who've had a massive falling out, for example, and one's raised yeah. a question against the other. Um, or a founder who has um, recently had uh, investment and the board are actually unhappy with that founder's performance um, through to sexual, bit, very big celebrity um, cases with people who've been accused of sexual harassment, for example, mm -hmm. and they all just landed in the papers. So, yeah, full, full range wow. of things, really, but predominantly the um, HR function. Um, really? So I set up originally to do consultancy um, and then was asked, well, actually, we need hands on the ground. And that that's mm -hmm. where the operational HR side came from. So predominantly really? that business. Fascinating, a really interesting thing. I mean, you mentioned mer merged acquisitions. We, I, we, I sold my first business. Or it was there was a group of us that owned the business, and we were a relatively small. We we're about 100, 120 people, but relatively small business in North Yorkshire. We sold a business to Siemens, obviously a very large Germanic global organization, and the yeah. the clash of cultures was quite stunning. It, it, we, um, sure. We worked with them for quite a while before, so we were sort of aware of it. But it was like you know, very, very systemized, very procedural, as you probably need to be when you get to a global company. But um, we were fast moving, flexible. Um, so yeah, it was quite a crunching of gears. I think was the uh, the, the, the 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 experience of that um, many many years ago. Um, and the other thing you said, and it, and it's really valuable because in what we do, we help people, businesses grow, and it is that point where. The, the HR function is often done um, for, for quite a long period by the owner, the, uh, the, the, one of the senior, and they're not necessarily skilled or knowledgeable or capable. It's just that's the book stops with them, I guess. And it's it part of growth is being able to delegate effectively, not necessarily to an employee because of the challenges then. But, so having someone like yourselves available to be able to support is so really takes the brakes off, I think, for many people because they don't have all that weight of trying to deal with the HR function and all the things that come with it. Yeah. I mean, when you set up, you're a, a, a jack of all trades, aren't you, really? Most <laughs> none, you could say. Apart from yeah. your special area, like mine is, 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 is HR. It wasn't running a business. Absolutely. Um, and all of a sudden, I needed to understand... I had to actually have counsel. I needed to pay people. I, I one month I didn't tell everybody. I did get told very quickly. I have to say, <laughs> um, uh, you know, understand the P and L, do all your own marketing, go networking. I mean, it's, it's just absolutely massive. All the the learning curve is exceedingly steep. Yeah, and you do get to a point where actually you're holding the business back. Yeah, you you, you cannot grow it and make it better and more successful yes. if you continue to do everything as a jack of all trades you do now need some specialists around yeah. you and that it's it's a 
is, uh, that's another then big curve, isn't it? Really, it's another step up on that journey. Um, but yes, that's where we hope that we can we can actually help people. We take take all of that away and say, look, you don't need to worry about that anymore. Yeah. We we sort it out. Not only do we advise you on it, but we deliver it as well. You know, we're not we're not an advice yeah. line. We actually will meet you. We feel part of your team. Yeah. We uh, we know all your people. We understand their foibles, but we're not involved in all the day to day politics that might go on. So we can still be a, a bit of an observer on the outside as well. So mm-hmm. yes, yeah, handy handy place to be. Yeah, no, it's absolutely bang on. I often say to, to, to business owners, we talk about sort of that classic exponential growth curve of a business. And I always say you can get to a certain level of success with just a few good people and cheap blood and guts just work really hard, you know. But, yeah. but, but, and it really is that the success is based on how hard we work. But once you've got to that limit of how hard you're working, you can't work any harder, any more hours that mindset holds the business back and it's similar with with things like the special you know trying to do it all is is and starting to delegate effectively to, to other organizations that can really help and support but it is a mindset change and it's a mindset change that some people don't manage to overcome unfortunately yeah yeah which is a shame i mean they've, they've yes. limited all of their own potential but also the potential of others which i just think is yeah a real shame it is a real shame um, so Claire, if you sort of start at the, the beginning, you, you give us a little bit more of your background, how you got into business and why this particular one for you. Right. OK. Um, <laughs> I won't go back to when I was a child. <laughs> um, I mean, I've, I've always done uh, HR since um I, I really liked business studies when I was younger and I was choosing my GCSE options. Um, always had a massive passion for history and the learnings, which now leads into people analytics little because we can yeah. see what happened and then obviously be able to predict what might happen. Yeah. Um, and I did my degree in HR. Um, so I was quite lucky. I managed to get a course that combined a few different things that I was passionate about. So I did psychology um, and marketing and HR. So in the first year, you did all three. And then you did a combined degree in the in the second and third year. So you you brought one and kept two. So I kept marketing and HR. Um, and um, I can't say that I always knew that I wanted to run a business, um, but I very quickly learned that I didn't suit a corporate environment. Right. Yeah. I was very lucky. I was very lucky to be um to join the businesses that I did to be entrusted with some amazing concepts and some amazing managers um and yeah so I was very lucky in that sense in a corporate um but my parents had raised a child that uh questioned everything they that's what they wanted so my mum would frequently play devil's advocate with me I did debate society so I, I regularly had to argue on the opposite side of something I actually genuinely believed in um and so that led I had a love of learning um which had been encouraged by my parents my dad was a lorry driver and my mum a secretary when I was very little um and then later came to have their own own businesses in one way or another um but yeah they they raised this very questioning child I'm not sure that they were happy ultimately <laughs> With the fact that I would then question them when I was a teenager. But anyway, um, and um, that doesn't necessarily always suit a corporate environment. You know, yeah. I was I was very much a doer, so I've got a very strong work ethic. Um, the idea for HR and eighty came uh, when I was travelling. So I uh, went with my now husband. Uh, we're coming up for 20 years married, 24 Brilliant. years together. Um, but we went traveling and we were lying on a beach in Thailand and came up with the concept for HR 180. But I knew I needed more actual experience. I was like 23 at that stage. Right. Um, I knew I needed more actual experience. And so um, came back, worked for various solicitors firms. So I'd started my career at Shoesmith Solicitors. Yes. Um, when I came back, I, I was working with Eversheds. Yep. Um, but I also went to work with O2, which was my last employed job before I started HO180. So I think you asked why I wanted to start the business. Yeah. So, um, there's a few different reasons for that, really. I guess, um, like I said, I was really fortunate when I was at Shoesmith, I worked with Ashridge Consulting. 
on a particular project, Shoesmith was very ahead of the curve in terms of getting all of their partners out of individual offices and into an open plan. Yes. Um, set up Property Direct, first mass conveyancing in the UK at the, at yep. the time there. Um, but talked a lot about, you know, the, the culture was very strong um, and lived, not just not just talked about, actually lived. And I was part of those projects, so it was really yeah. exciting. Um, and I wanted, uh, because of that, the benefits of those experiences, I'd worked on some really challenging things. I had um, had, are you allowed to say that you were successful early in life? I don't know, but I feel yeah, like absolutely. I was lucky, but I did also work very, very hard. Absolutely. Um, and um, I wanted to give that learning to people who wouldn't have been able to have it like my parents when they earned when they owned their own businesses. Yes. So I wanted to be able to give them uh, give SMEs access to blue chip experience yep. and um, somebody to guide and support them yep. through the phases that are quite difficult in in terms of growth. Um, also, I was desperate to have a business. Obviously, HR is predominantly female and therefore also viewed as not particularly relevant in some circumstances. It's more so now than, than yeah. when I first started. Um, but I wanted mums to be able to have a really challenging, interesting yeah. um career that really felt like a career where they were constantly learning and they were doing new things and being pushed outside of their comfort zone yep. whilst at the same time knowing that the family absolutely came first and that was understood by both yep. them and their employer yep. and my mum hadn't had that so my mum was a working mum yep. um, and she could not attend sports days and right. uh, you know choral things and debates and things like that because yep. she was at work um and uh, Christmas plays and and I could see the strain on her she wanted to be there desperately but just couldn't be and I didn't want other people to have to go through that so I wanted to create yeah. a, di a different business with a different model yeah. that would allow mums to have actually have both brilliant um and then over time I think as we as we did that and we won awards for it um over time then it also came about training younger people training the next generation of HR professionals and training them really really well yep. some of them I took on when they had just finished university and are still with HR 180 today so still have oh, given brilliant. their trust in their career development and and um yeah so that that's really been really great and I guess to walk the talk, basically, produce a company that was in challenging and engaging, but where people were could be themselves, where they yep. were committed. And we haven't always got that right. <laughs> I have to say, we haven't always got that right. But I would say that we definitely do have it right now. Um, but we did we did have a short period where, um, yeah, where things where things were not particularly great. That's but, um yeah in in the main we've got really engaged really committed people Brilliant. our average length of service is six years so wow. yeah, something wow. like that. yeah that's 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 brilliant and and that happens doesn't it i mean things change environments change we we, we all make um decisions that are with the right ones but that's just part of growing a team growing a business yep true yeah yeah that's true there's a few things though i'd wish i could go back and rewrite <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's it's. I I don't think there's anyone I've ever spoken to that would say everything went perfectly, and they were there is a decision they made they don't regret or would would change. But but ultimately, yeah. I, I get I guess one of the things I always think is, you know, we're here right now, you know, emotionally, financially, success wise, from all the decisions we made and actions we've taken. So, yeah. you know, if if where we are now is is great, then that's fine. The, that that may be a function of the the put the, the less successful decisions as much as the su successful ones if if we've learned yeah, that's true. Yeah, very true. So, so all that period all that period of, of growth what what are some of the biggest we talked about you know what are some of the biggest challenges that you would like to share with us you don't have to share any but are there any particular key challenges that you've had to overcome over this 20 2006 so that's 18 years i think isn't it yeah that's yes right. yeah 18 years um challenges <laughs> no, but not too many. I feel like there are other people that have had much, you know, when when we listen to our clients talking about their some of their circumstances, I feel <laughs> like some of them have been given a rough deal and in comparison, <laughs> they probably haven't. But at, at the time it probably felt bad. Um I guess 
one of the biggest things when I first started was my age and my gender. Um, right. Into the landscape, obviously, was very different then. I yeah. my first networking event, I walked into a room literally filled with men. There wasn't a single woman in yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think possibly that. Um, and then there's, uh, can you say this is the usual thing? But I, I had twins. So in 2013, I had twins, boy girl twins. Yeah. Um. I had plans for that. I knew that I had wanted, I knew that originally when I set up the business, I didn't want children at all. And then over time that, that slowly changed. Um, and so for about a year beforehand, we'd been planning to get pregnant. And so I've been trying to gear up the business so that it didn't rely on me as right. much. Um, and that we had people who knew how things were done within the business and that it wasn't all just the knowledge in my head. Yeah. Um, but it still went horribly wrong <laughs> <laughs> I just don't think that you can run a business successfully uh, on two and a half hour sleep. It just, you know, it just doesn't work. <laughs> I, had, I had about three months maternity leave um, and then came back um, in into the, the, the day to day, fortunately, with with help, obviously, looking after the kids. Um but uh, and I think we did all right. Probably people were re- were lenient in those first, you know, that first twelve months yes. of being born. Um, but you start to run out of reserves of energy. I mean, I'm a very very high energy person. I've always worked very long hours. Um, I'm not. I'm not um, condoning that. I'm not saying other people should do it. But I yes. I just have. Yes. like my work. I'm quite passionate about it. Yes. Um, and. Uh, so I've always said I was a high energy person, but by the time the kids, you know, we were getting into 2016, the kids were three years old. I was drained. Uh, I did not have a jot left to give. Right. Um, and I do remember I did massively let down a team member. I walked into a particular situation where she was relying on me to offer her support in that situation. And I just couldn't, I just turned around and walked out at not my finest hour. I hasten to add. <laughs> Um, but yeah so I think that we had our culture suffered um there was some terrible decision making around that time and so I think that was that was quite a big issue yeah um in 2017 we lost a work colleague um and that that was awful yeah absolutely awful in a three week period um we we lost a colleague to cancer um and so that yeah that has stayed with the team actually I would say I mean the team were amazing everybody was absolutely amazing everybody pulled together obviously clients were just all of a sudden left without an HR business partner everybody the clients were very understanding and incredibly supportive in in quite difficult circumstances as we were obviously reeling from shock but then also trying to keep the business going and keep account service and, and all of those things um, but the, the team were absolutely awesome and um, it did bring everyone together and it did also, I think, give us a bit of a a wake-up shock to the fact that life shouldn't all be about work and that yes. there, are other, there are other things that we absolutely have to make, make the most of life itself. Yes. Um, and then I bet everyone tells you COVID. <laughs> which was that last big disaster yes it is a thing in a good way in a good way I mean we went um I I drove home on just trying to think it would have been maybe the 19th of March I think think was the Monday wasn't it I think or the I think was it Monday then Tuesday was yeah yeah so I think I think I think it was Boris announced the furlough scheme on May be the Tuesday and I'd gone home on the Friday I literally I cried the whole way home which I, I'm not an emotional person at all. I'm not a crier, um, but I did cry. <laughs> so I just, I, our clients had been ringing for weeks. Everybody was wanting to do redundancies. Right. Uh, they were all um, about to scale back all of their teams massively, yeah. which would then have had an impact, obviously, on our revenues. We wouldn't have needed such a big team to service those accounts because those accounts wouldn't have existed. Yeah. I guess I kind of saw everything that I'd been building by that point for what 14, 15 years. Um just, just disappearing, just literally disappearing. Um and then thank you, Boris, for uh putting together and and co for putting together the furlough scheme because nobody knew what it was, nobody understood. No. 
and um, you know where did the word even furlough come from which is quite history it gets quite good historically in terms of like it wasn't an, a word in the english language in law and so therefore it was taken from america and that's why they could use it and put law around it really quickly so that's quite interesting I believe anyway i don't take no it makes sense i i looked it up myself the, the only the only reference to furlough was watching a tv series called mash when they used to go from the frontline surgeons in the war and they yeah. go on furlough which was basically leave leave yeah you know I, so yeah it's fascinating but yeah that's... um and then everybody was trying to keep their businesses running with uh small groups of people who were in a bubble together and needed operational support in doing that we were inundated absolutely inundated I, it was like going back and starting the business again with the hours yeah. that we worked and of course we were all our kids were at home um fortunately i was able to give my kids to my husband and say i'm so sorry but you have to sort <laughs> um and and bless him he did um in between he, he also works for himself so uh but he has slightly different projects that he yeah. can kind of work around rather yeah. than being available set hours um so he did that and he took over all the homeschooling and uh, god i am eternally grateful for that um but yeah there were people here that couldn't and they had to be furloughed because their partners couldn't help them with the responsibility yes yes um, and also we still weren't sure what was happening so yeah there were there were a few people who were furloughed um and then as many of us as possible tried to keep everything going as long as possible yes. we had to say sorry guys you're gonna have to come back we can't we can't cope and we're all exhausted yep so, yeah, many many people told you COVID. Um, but I just don't think it's something that the world had seen in such a very no. long time, and or that could have prepared for even. It, it it was it was how these interviews came about originally because we 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 took a decision as an organisation as we all went into COVID, COVID, not knowing, you know, as you said, nobody knew what what anything was going to happen, and because there was so much fear, we were doing we were doing webinars three times a week on um, maintaining a positive mental attitude, replanning, the word pivot came up probably for yeah. the week. You know, that was the word was really by the end. <laughs> Absolutely, everyone, everyone was pivoting. Um, but then we started interviewing business leaders. These came about because we were in, interviewing business leaders about how they were managing the change of, you know, right. te technological leadership, management, all these things, dealing with customers, all the things. And, and ju just as a way of showing other people that you can get through it because that was... You know, I think that was a really valuable thing just to say, you know, it is survivable and, and in some, in, in you know, in some in some areas, thrivable. It was a, it was an opportunity for some yeah. people. Uh, I interviewed somebody, funny enough, uh, amazing guy. Their business, it was basically connecting the hospitals to the testing labs. And this was wow. way before COVID. You know, it was basically, you know, you're having a kidney test or something. They would yeah. communicate because up until that point, it was a, a test tube and a and a with, a with a bit of paper attached. And I remember him saying that the business the business volume increased 9,000% in three weeks. And it, it honestly, he's the coolest guy. We just said, oh, yeah, well, yeah, we just sort of don't. And, he, and at the time COVID hit, he was the only person with a laptop. Everyone else had desktop computers. And you just go, how? You know, I'm sure you're familiar with fast growth and things. And, you know, how you can manage that. It, it sounds amazing from a, a turnover and obviously sales perspective, but just dealing with the whole logistical and, and team elements of, of that was just incredible. So, yeah, it's fascinating. Um, uh, but most people, yes, they do mention that COVID w will have had a negative impact for most businesses as yours. Yeah. I mean, I think we were, we are, I should be incredibly grateful tech wise. We've always been ahead of the game. Right. Um, yeah. And so, yes, we, we had to find a few extra laptops, but we didn't have to retrain everybody and try yeah. and get laptops out for everyone. And, um, you know, we'd been using Teams and we, yeah. because we're so very, we use a lot of our clients tech as well. So lots of different clients have different HR information systems. Yes. So we might be using uh, Hi Bob one day, Bright HR another day, or sometimes in the same hour. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we're quite tech savvy, and so people yeah. can pick things up quite quite quickly. Um, so yes, that that was something that we didn't have to have to Brilliant. work with, people with, thankfully. It it it's yeah. I mean, it was an amazing experience. In high, you know, looking back, it was quite fascinating how how people 
were resilient enough to get through it and yeah. you know but um yeah but thank god it's it's all over so yeah. <laughs> whether it's from challenges or other areas what are the biggest learnings you've got about growing growing business and obviously the longevity of growing business because uh you know 18 years is 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 will have taught you quite a lot i would imagine yeah yeah you'd hope but now i'm sat here <laughs> thinking oh god my father um i mean i'm, I'm gonna go start straight with people basically yeah. um you need to surround yourself with amazing people. Yep. Um, people who are really passionate, who are determined. Um, I think you mentioned about at, at the in the part in, in an earlier part of the conversation um, about the fact that you you do it with your people, yes. um, and um, and that's how you build things. I mean, I, I remember. Thank God we don't have these days now. But I do remember that there were individuals who still with me now who would have been there at seven o'clock at night while I was getting pizzas, you know, in order to build the business and yep. to do it. Um, and they were just as determined as me that we were going to make this thing that felt ours work. Um, and that it wasn't just a job, you know, it wasn't just uh, um, something that you, you came in, you did, and you were really glad to walk out and leave. Yep. So, so yeah really really good people not necessarily that come with all the skills uh, immediately yeah. but that show masses of potential um and um a, and a desire to to uh learn and to want to improve and to take feedback yep um yeah so i think i'm gonna start with people in terms of biggest lessons um i think maybe problems as well like um, lots of entrepreneurs had good ideas. I have, I have lots of good ideas. <laughs> I think they're good ideas, maybe something. Absolutely. Um, but you do. You're like, oh, that could really work. Or yep. that. Oh, we could do that. Or we could do this. But uh, that doesn't mean to say that there's actually anybody who wants it. No. Um, and you can waste a lot of time. Like we did have a, we did have a good idea for e-learning. Um, and unfortunately, the launch of our e-learning platforms coincided with COVID, and so we had to kind of shelve right. that. Yeah. Yeah um and it would you know it's still a good idea but does it solve a problem and in what way did it solve the problem and I don't think that we thought that through fully yeah. enough it was just that I'd had a great idea and I wanted to yes <laughs> I think it's about solving people's problems on the conversely one of our clients came to us and said um we we're really unhappy with our payroll provider um this is quite a number of years ago now can you set up a payroll team and we're like um, and we've done payroll ever since. It was incredibly really? difficult. I had no idea what we were doing. Um, we had no software. We, you know, we it, it was incredibly difficult at the time. But we took somebody's problem, turned it into a solution, and then were able to offer that solution to other clients. And there are obviously still clients using pay our payroll services today. Yes. So, yeah, I think look look at what the problems are rather than what your ideas are. Um, <laughs> Thing, make every penny count would be my next one yep um, we and who is our finance director um and i run the business as we would run our personal finances yes so, right um and, and as a result of that we have not ever had to have an overdraft we have no loans not nothing um don't owe anyone anything which i i appreciate also limits our growth <laughs> Um, but I'm happy with that. I'm happy with the balance. I can sleep at night. And and as long as I'm happy with it, then we're all good. Um, but there are lots of businesses that we work with um, and alongside where employees especially do not see the, that that money as theirs and, and that they can contribute to a scenario where I, either the business can continue to survive and thrive yes. and make money yep. uh, or they can literally just spend it without even considering the fact that they're spending it. Does that make sense? So, you know, yes. even if it's stamps and and not really realising that that actually could just go in an ordinary first class rather than having a, a large letter stamp on it. I don't know, I'm making things up now, but no, no, I get, yes, they get the money as their own and they don't make every single penny count. Whereas I feel like treating the money that you have in the business like it's a really precious gift means that yes. you then somehow always end up with more of it than you need I don't quite know how it all works but it does seem to for us yeah um, yeah and so that yeah that's good 
no, but it, it, it makes absolute sense. We, 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 we've got a sort of a, a, a gradation of, 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 of team, um, what's the right word? Team behaviours. So, but we call it the point of power. So below the point of power, we get typically blame, excuses, and denial. And obviously, that's a fairly negative place to be. Above yeah. it, we have responsibility, then accountability, then ownership. Yes. And we don't mean ownership by share ownership. We oh, just yes. mean, no, exactly. Just so taking your ownership of a particular. Exactly right. Exactly it. So re responsibility is just doing the right thing, doing things right, and that's great. Yeah. We need employees to do things right. Accountability being do things right to the right quantity. That's so that's either doing it to the right quantity or managing other people to do the right quantity. So that's sort of the management level. But ownership is when you've got people that own it, they go, they're constantly looking at how things can improve. Yes. And it's that, oh yeah, look, we could save some money if we did this, or we could make some more money, or why don't you know and, and that 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 behavior is is in anybody. So it doesn't, it's not a a function of seniority it's uh, anybody can go yeah. Yeah. Been, you know i've been looking at this and and i just think you know with some new technology that there's only a few you know whatever few pounds a month or something we could really make you know save some money so i i really get that i think it's engaging people to own areas of of the business in terms of making it better i think that's hard i think it uh, is definitely necessary but it's yeah. hard to build that Yes. I know that when people join us here at HR180, it will take them a good 12 to 18 months of lived experience. Yep. Being somebody, you know, maybe a long-standing member of staff in a team meeting say to me, I disagree with you. And then, then they're for not, not to be any, I mean, that person might have turned bright red as they were saying, I disagree with you. <laughs> but then for there not to be any repercussions of that or my no, attitude really. have changed towards them in any way. You know, they need to see that on a on a, a, a daily basis in order to then feel comfort, confident and comfortable enough to make those suggestions. But then they do, they really do. We had a team member um, who a couple of weeks ago said, oh, I think we should be approaching this sort of business in this particular way. We're three weeks away from being able to go out and actually talk to some of those individuals. We've done a little bit of research. We've spoken to some clients that we already have in that sector. That we have, you know, that they've, they've gone away and driven that project. Brilliant. Um, and they've been with us two years. So brilliant. Uh, yeah, it can make a big difference to your business if you can actually, obviously, gen generate that. Yes, it, it it can take time, but it, it it's you know it's encouraging. It's it it. I think you're right. It's it's, it's a inherent often in individuals but it's encouraging the behavior because you know you know many organizations unfortunately i'm sure you see this as, as well as we do it still operates that sort of blame culture of you know you know if you get it wrong if you make a mistake we're gonna you're gonna be all over we'll be all over it rather than um you know the philosophy we have is you it's okay to make mistakes but only the same mistake once yeah you know, it, it, because typically innovation comes from trying different things and just stretching, stretching a little bit. Um, but yeah, no, um, it's. But I, I was also told a, a long time ago, which I think you mentioning problems was that that you know the job of a business owner is to solve problems. That's that's our job. And if we, and I remember it was an Australian told me they said, you know, if you don't like problems, get out of business because it's 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 our it's our meat and drink. Claire, um, um, you, you, you probably were a, were a business coaching organisation. I'm keen to know who the best coaches you've worked with, whether that's business, sport, life in general. Who, who have been the biggest influences? Um, I've not, I've not had a coach in the sense of action coach. Yeah, um, I have. I have again. We've been very fortunate. Um, in I think it was 2009, I was involved, invited to be part of the Goldman Sachs program. Oh yes. I was in the pilot cohort, so it was yes. the very first uh, cohort. Yeah, yeah. Five. Um, and so that was that was amazing. That was a really amazing opportunity, and um, not just from the content, obviously, that, that came from Leeds University, but also from the peer to peer learning. Yeah. And um, there's still people that I meet with. Brilliant. Now. Yes. Um, all these years later I mean maybe only once or twice a year now um but yeah get together for a lunch and just have a have a bit of a gossip and bounce a few ideas around and that was absolutely Brilliant. invaluable that that was awesome um and yeah really did make a, a really big difference um in terms of then other coaches I think really it's just been really inspirational people in my life my very first HR director 
Yeah. So when Great. I was at Hugh Smith, um, my HR director must have seen something in me, thank God. Um, and she <laughs> really did let me run with my potential. She did also let me fall flat on my face. <laughs> but when I did, she did pick me up, dust me off, um, and you know, re- and help me to understand what had gone wrong. Right. Um, yeah, so she was amazing. I, I remember a situation where she was walking down the corridor, I was standing with a partner a very very senior equity partner um and he was berating me slightly about about something um and um he he walked off and uh she came over and and just grabbed me and just said i just i don't you know just an observation on your body language you literally look like the most defeated person (laughs) 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 Um, and you know (laughs) Partners are just people and you can still have your say and you are an expert in what you do and yes. then necessarily and they they will, you know, they have a particular analytical yeah. mind. They're like they're expecting, you know, a different really? response from you. So yeah, so that was good. Um I think uh also I mentioned earlier Ange, who is our uh, our finance director. So Ange has been with the business, I think it's 12 years now. Um and um Oh, she is my rah rah person. Like, come on, we've got this. We can, we can, we can Great. do. This. And I think we're that for each other. Yep. You know, we'll both have different moments. Fortunately, where we both want to fill the car and just run away. <laughs> um, but yeah, and so we're there. We are definitely there for each other. And Brilliant. so, and her, just her, uh, res- her levels of resilience and her what I'm going to call bounce back ability. I'm not sure that's even a word. Um, but yeah, bounce back ability and the commitment and the determination to the to the people in the business, but also the business itself is, is amazing. Um, and then I've worked with some amazing MDs over the years, really privileged to see people who are really yeah. strategic um, and seeing the, the big picture, uh, you know, and, and a bit more, maybe have a, appetite for a little bit more risk than perhaps I would um or somebody who is uh really compassionate but also very no nonsense perhaps seems a little more traditional you know maybe seems a little bit traditional but actually has an absolute heart of gold but is exceedingly commercial and has just the most amazing business acumen and I'm so lucky I work with these people and I meet so many yeah. different yeah brilliant throughout I've not actually had to necessarily pay for a coach because I can just be coached by yep. the people I'm really fortunate to work with absolutely so, yeah. I, I I guess I'm similar I you know I work with some amazingly inspirational people and um I benefit almost as much as I think hopefully they do from, from the work we do with them it, 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 I, it yeah. you know, I mean there's some amazing it, but you know part of doing these 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 um these webinars again was 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 the reality of of realizing how many brilliant businesses and br- brilliant business people we've got right on the doorstep. We don't need to go yeah. down south or anywhere else to find them. They're all here. So that was why we wanted to highlight it. Brilliant. So to talk about you specifically, what what would you say you've learned about yourself throughout your journey so far, Claire? Um, I've always been quite a confident person. Um, one of my school reports said, um, Claire is confident, bordering on arrogance. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. So I'm not, I'm not sure that's a lesson I've learned, but I think I have learned <laughs> to be unapologetically me. Great. And that there's that that there isn't anything wrong with that. A, a Absolutely. Empathetic and um, but I am quite a direct person, and the team need to know that, obviously, and that yep. I not take not take that personally and know that that's who I am but allow them to be the, themselves as well yeah. that might be a bit more quiet and a bit more reserved and take a little bit of time you know to extra time to digest things yes um so I think that would be one of the the things um I am still not good at it at all but I think the other one would be ask for help right and that uh, I've been absolutely shocked that people are really willing to give it yeah so I'm still not good at asking for it because to me it seems like it's a sign of weakness, and so I do not like I do not like that at all. A bit of perfectionist, um, but actually I've been so surprised by the number of people. If you yeah. say, "Would you spare me five minutes to bounce this idea around or to give me some tips on something?" that absolutely will make that okay. time for you, without doubt, and are really generous of spirit and time and effort yeah. and energy. Um, 
yeah so I need probably need to do that a little bit more but I have at least learned it I just I need to <laughs> practice um I think building a, a team with intent in terms of its culture and its north star and its purpose means that you get it it's not it doesn't have to just be a dream or something yep. that you're continually striving for you you know it's putting that intent behind it and you'll get it yes um and then probably knowing what that north star is actually yeah. um and then living it identifying it I, I, we do find in our jobs a lot of people who are searching like oh i want to be happy you know like how can i become happy yeah well actually happiness is what is it when you break it down it's in all those tiny interactions that you have and making sure that you see like oh look at the sun as it's reflecting you know you're on a road waiting to go home but the, the sun is just reflecting off the leaves in a really interesting way that to me is happy absolutely and then and yeah so not not having to search for it in in a specific search but just making it be there I know I don't know that I'm explaining myself really well but the, the whole North Star knowing what it, what you're good at and who you are and what you're what you bring to the party but also conversely what you don't that other people can bring yes um and then living it doing good things spreading yeah. kindness as much as you can we've often put the client before us in terms of we know it's, it doesn't make commercial sense but we know yeah. it's the right thing to do yeah um, and we've done it um, and then that means yeah. that we you know it, it does seem to then come back to you that's not that's not ever our intention but the universe does seem to then provide back in some way that empathy and that respect it does come to you. yeah time and time again so yeah I think those would be my main brilliant yeah, I guess yeah brilliant and, and looking forward what what does the future look like for you guys and what challenges do you think you might face if any um, the future is looking very interesting. Brilliant. <laughs> um, there's more competition than ever before. Yes. Um, yeah. When I first when I first set up HR One Eighty, you know, it, it was education. Nobody knew what outsourced HR was. They everybody thought it was an advice line, so they thought it was like in a peninsula or a sentient or yep. one of those. Um, and so it was all full on education, literally for about the first ten years, probably actually. Yes. Um, and then in the last eight years, you know, there there have been an explosion of people that do um, and and provide an actual function. Yeah. Obviously, there were always lots of sole traders who would work with a range of yeah. different clients and, and make up a job from that. But now to have actual HR consultancies, there there definitely is more competition um so it's about then exploring like how we stay ahead in that market and, and what are we doing those are some of our things that we're considering at the moment um how how do we stay ahead how do we use yeah. that and leverage that tech knowledge that we have yes. so we're looking um we're, we're looking to continually innovate so we've just um brought back in, in the e-learning so we're not quite doing it in the same way but we're we're making sure that we can get it to market quickly in a way that adds value to our clients we're looking at the hr chatbot so, um, you know, it is not best use of our clients' time and money us answering questions about what is in a policy document. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, the we're, we're trialling the, the chatbot with the client at the moment in order to see whether people do actually engage with it and whether it gives the answers. Yeah. But that, I mean, that technology, when we first started looking at it 18 months ago, we were going to have to build everything from scratch. Right. Um, and now you can almost pretty much get a bot, upload a whole load of documents into it and say, answer questions on these. It's, yeah, so the R&D that we did originally was worthless, um, but, you know, in, but interesting, very, very interesting. Um, and so, yeah, innovation, I think. And I'm just really thankful that more and more businesses, you know, we, we are predominantly in the UK a service-led economy. Um, and those services rely on people delivering them and the knowledge that's in those people's heads. Yes. As soon as those people go, you've lost vital knowledge, but also relationships, yep. um, you know, and, and, and what comes with that and, and downgraded your eyes, uh, you downgraded yourself slightly in the eyes of your clients if you're continuously losing people. Um, and so people and talent is now even perceived 
to be as more important than it was back in the day. Yeah. You know, people tend to, the board always focuses on commercials and financials and sales figures and, um, but more and more boards are starting to see that they need their people to be performing absolutely at their peak in order to keep things going. And yeah, and it, I mean, it, to me, it's always just made common sense. To me, I mean, how has it taken 18 years to get here? But it has, and at least people are recognising that and people in talent is thankfully now being seen as far more important than perhaps it was 18 years ago. So, no, it's really interesting. I, I, I'm having conversation, a lot of conversations now about businesses in their nature, they will have a significant budget to find and retain great clients. You know, that's marketing. That's marketing yeah. clients, yeah. Been yeah. doing it for years. But really, we should be spending a similar amount, or certainly another significant amount, on finding and retaining great people because businesses are built on people. And, and I think people are really, you know, businesses are really getting that now. And yeah. so, you know, that investment in, in, in the team, finding them, keeping them, rewarding them is, is 100%. You know, yeah. really, is, is moving forward. So, finally, Claire, I'm just keen to know what you, what advice you'd give to an 18 year old you if you could go back in time and do that. I think an 18 year old me was confident. I had enough ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Nothing whatsoever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, mistakes. I think mistakes have value. Great. Um, you don't have to be a perfectionist. Um, and that sometimes we make our biggest transformations and our biggest changes and our biggest leaps in our own personal development and growth when we've made a mistake and everything's gone wrong um and then probably to just carry on oh she <laughs> <laughs> um, and that I'm right to fight for what I believe in right. and, and um yeah and, and not to listen to people to continue not listening to people when they tell you that they that you can't um yeah and and just don't believe the naysayers i guess get, absolutely get on and do it get out there get on get and do it you know lots of people said to me i had to have a business plan um and i had to have this and i had to have that and i should have spoken to these people but actually you just need to get out there find out what people want solve their okay. problems and yes of course you need a framework behind you but that growth plan potentially could come a little bit later it doesn't have to be there right from day one because at that point you don't know what you don't know and you haven't discovered it yet absolutely go out there yeah i think um I, think that yeah, I mean for the long term planning makes sense but until you know exactly what it is you're going to do and how you might do it a plan is a bit pointless really in many ways yeah. um so no, i know I, I totally get that well claire it's been absolutely fascinating talking to you and um just just for anyone that's um would like to get in touch with you or, or your business what would be the best way to do that um i guess go to the website which is um hln80.co.uk brilliant um or find me on linkedin i uh i at least i have a really distinctive name <laughs> brilliant <laughs> there aren't too many Claire Morley Joneses on LinkedIn so yeah I, either of those would be well, great I would suggest you've got a very distinctive website too so if anyone's watching go to the website it's brilliant especially go to the team page and see all the superheroes that work with Claire so uh, for, for now thank you so much it'd be great to catch up with you in another six to months and just see how things have developed with with some of these these intent, uh, projects you've got but but great. for now thank you so much for your time amazing Chris thank you so much it's been amazing thank you